Hi everyone! In today's video, we will learn how to create such interactive reports from raw data in Excel from scratch. Most of this dashboard will work based on pivot tables. In the previous video of this playlist, we got acquainted with pivot tables in great detail and learned how to work with them. That is why, if you haven't watched the previous video, I advise you to do it first and then return to this video. In this case, it will be much easier for you to understand what is happening in this video tutorial. However, this is not mandatory and you can decide for yourself whether you want to start directly from this video or not. Ok, a quick introduction to this video is done, so now let's get started with today's tutorial. You can find the practice file from this tutorial, as usual, at the link in the video description. So we start as it was set absolutely from scratch. All we have is this table with raw data, and from this data we need to make an interactive visual report that will give us the opportunity to look behind the scenes of these dry numbers. First of all, we can see that this dashboard consists of separate blocks. These blocks are charts of different types, and they are controlled by these three slicers. If you want to create such a dashboard, then it is better to do it step by step, block by block. This means that we will first create each of the individual dashboard charts on a separate sheet, and then we will transfer them into the final composite dashboard. And this is how we will create our interactive dashboard in today's video. As a result, by the end of the video, this file will contain a sheet with raw data, separate sheets for each of the charts, as well as a sheet with the final dashboard. This is the optimal file structure for dashboards in Excel. Well, let's get started. First, let's transform this raw data into an Excel data table, which will make our future workflows easier and faster. Just select one of the cells with the data and use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl T. Make sure this option is checked and click OK. Good, let's rename this table straight away. As we already know from the Pivot Tables tutorial, this can be done under the Table Design tab in this field. Ok, let's start creating our dashboard with the simplest chart, the one that shows all product categories in descending order of revenue. The data table is still selected, so go to the Insert tab and here click on Pivot Table. Here we can see that the data source of the pivot table we are creating will be this selected data table, and also we see that the pivot table will be placed on a new worksheet, which is exactly what we need, so let's click on OK. Great, here is the new worksheet, and it contains this new empty pivot table. Let's rename both of them. The worksheet will be named Categories, and the pivot table will be named PT underscore Categories. Now let's set up this first pivot table. First drag the category field to the row section and then drag the revenue field to the value section. By the way, I want to point out that our dashboard today will only focus on revenue values. Ok, the future dashboards will be filtered by regions, cities and years, so let's add these fields to the filters section. Later, this will allow us to better see which filters are being applied. So I drag the region and city fields to the filters section. And as already mentioned, we also need years as a separate field. Since we don't have this field yet, we need to group the date field. The easiest way to do this is to temporarily drag the date field into the row section and Excel will automatically group the dates for us. Ok, and now all we have to do is remove the generated quarters and date fields from the row section. And as for the years field, it can be moved to the filters section. Great. Now let's adjust the headers. First let's change this header to category, and this one should contain the word revenue. In order for Excel to allow us to write this word in the second column header, at the end we add a space character like this and press enter. Ok, now it's time to create a chart based on this pivot table. Select one of the pivot table cells and go to the insert tab. Here click on recommended charts, and in order to build such a chart, we need this chart type called clustered bar. So we select it and click on OK. As a result, we get this special pivot chart. The peculiarity of such charts is that they are associated with the pivot table and everything that happens in the pivot table is also immediately displayed in the chart. Just as an example, let's put the product field under the category field and the chart immediately changes to match the new pivot table structure. In principle, you can go ahead and add even more fields. The chart will immediately adjust its structure in accordance with the changes in the pivot table. However, if you add many fields to the pivot table, make sure you don't overload the pivot chart with information, which is now actually the case in this example. As I said, it was just a demo, so let's get back to the simpler structure of the pivot table and pivot chart. Ok, 
so we could see that all structural changes in the pivot table are immediately reflected in the pivot chart. However, the connection between both is not limited only to structural changes. Formatting changes are also taken into account. Let's change the number format of the revenue values. Right-click one of the values and select the number format option. In this window, we can now select one of the predefined number formats or configure our own one. So, for example, if I select this currency format and click OK, the values in both the pivot table and pivot chart will be displayed as I have chosen. However, this standard number format does not make the chart very visual. Therefore, I will define my own format that will display values in millions. This will make our chart much more readable. So I open the number format window again and go to the custom section. Here let's delete the current code and enter the following. Click OK and the values are now displayed in abbreviated form in both the pivot table and pivot chart. A few words about the number code we entered. Number formats in Excel is a separate very voluminous topic on which I will someday shoot a separate video and insert a link here. That is why we will not discuss in detail how to write such number formats but I want to show this very brief explanation of what each of the characters in this code means, so that you can have at least a general idea. And, as it was said, in the future a separate video on the topic of number formats will be released on the channel, so please subscribe to make sure that you don't miss this video. And for now, let's continue building our dashboard. As a next step, let's sort the revenue values in descending order. Simply right-click one of the revenue values and in the sort section choose to sort largest to smallest. As you can see, in the pivot table the values were sorted properly, but in the chart they are displayed in reverse order, so let's fix that. To do this, click on one of the category names and then double-click that borderline of the category labels. As a result, this chart settings window appears on the right, and here we have to activate this setting, categories in reverse order. Great! Product categories are now displayed in descending order in both the pivot table and pivot chart. The only thing I would like to change is the location of the x-axis labels. Let's move them back to the bottom of the chart. Click on one of these labels and under Labels change the setting to High. Good. Let's continue. If you have already worked with regular charts in Excel, then most likely you have already noticed these chart controls. They are one of the distinguishing features of pivot charts and they can be used to filter values. However, in our final dashboard, values will be filtered using slicers, which is why, as a next step, I want to show you how these controls can be hidden. To do this, simply select the chart and in the pivot chart analyze tab, deactivate the field buttons option. OK. And also let's remove this label, select it and press the delete button. Now let's adjust the chart title. And I would prefer to do it in a dynamic way as well. So I will move the pivot table one column to the right and three rows down. And now let's enter the future title of our chart here in cell B2. OK, now click on the current chart title so that it is selected like this and then go to the formula bar. Enter the equal sign here and use the mouse to select the cell with the prepared new chart title. Press Enter and now the chart title is taken from that cell automatically. So, if we change the text in the cell, the chart title will automatically update as well. Great, now the chart is actually ready. The only thing I would like to change is to make the title and labels bold and italic. Excellent! The first style of the future dashboard is prepared. We will place all prepared charts on the dashboard at the very end, when we will have all the charts ready. So now let's move on to creating the second chart, which is structurally the same to the first one, but will display revenue by producers in descending order. As already mentioned, each chart will be created on a separate sheet. Therefore, press and hold the control key, drag the worksheet we have to the right like this, release the mouse button, and as a result a copy of this worksheet will be created. The chart from this worksheet will be dedicated to producers, so I will rename this newly created worksheet accordingly. Ok, in this worksheet let's first change the title of the pivot chart, as well as the header and name of the pivot table. OK, and now replace the category field with the producer field and sort the values in descending order again. That's it for the second chart. By simply copying the previous chart sheet, we were able to save so many work steps and quickly prepare the second chart. So now let's move on to creating the third chart of our future dashboard. Again, I copy the last sheet and this time I will call it Top 10 Products. Here the first steps are again to change the chart title, pivot table headers, and the pivot table name. 
OK, now let's replace the producer field with the product field and sort the displayed values in descending order. Right click, sort, sort largest to smallest. Great. OK, as the name of the chart suggests, it should only display the 10 most important products, not the entire list of products. So let's change the chart settings accordingly. Click on this sorting and filtering control of the pivot table and under value filters, select the top 10 option. The following window appears and here we can adjust the filtering options. For example, we can set up our pivot table to display only the top 5 products. However, for our chart now, top 10 products are exactly what we need, so leave these settings and click on OK. As a result, the chart now only shows the top 10 products by revenue. Well, another part of our final dashboard is ready, so now let's move on to the next chart. In the already usual way, I make a copy of the last worksheet and make corrections to it. This time we are going to display the shares of regions in total revenue. Therefore, the title of the chart will be as follows. Revenue by region. Furthermore, this time we will be using a different type of chart, namely the donut chart. So right-click the existing chart and select the Change Chart Type option. In the window that opens, under the Pie Chart section, let's select this Donut Chart Type. OK, and the chart has been successfully converted to the desired chart type. However, before we start configuring this chart, there is an important note to make. If you are copying pivot tables and pivot charts that have had filters applied, be sure to clear those filters. Otherwise, you can easily miss the absence of some elements. So what we do first now is select the pivot table and in the data tab, under the filter section, click on the clear button. Good. Now the chart again displays all the values. So let's replace the currently displayed product field with the region field. Add the new field, remove the old one, and the chart shows the revenue proportions of the four regions. Now it's time to make this chart more visually appealing. Let's start by adding proportion labels. To do this, select the chart, click on the plus symbol and put a tick in front of the data labels option. OK, and by default, these labels are added. Let's make them more custom. To do this, select one of the labels, click on the plus symbol, and here, under the data labels, click on this triangle. Select More Options. Now in the Auxiliary Settings window, under the Label Contains section, let's check the category name and percentage options. And the value option on the contrary will be deactivated. As a result, our labels now look like this. As a next step, let's change the color scheme of the chart. In the Design tab, we have this Change Color button. Click on it, and here we can choose one of the predefined color schemes. This color scheme for today's tutorial, in my opinion, is quite suitable, so let's select it. To make the labels stand out more against the dark backgrounds, I will change the font color to white, and also I would like to change the style of the font to bold and italic. To complete the visual design of this donut chart, let's change the outline of the shares and the size of the donut hole. To do this, click once on one of the shares to select them all, and then on the Format tab, let's change the outline of the shape to white and make it thicker. To change the size of the donut hole, just change here the value for the donut hole size. Great, now let's move on to the next point. Let's correct the order in which the cardinal directions are placed on our chart. First, let's adjust the main order in the pivot table using the drag and drop method. Select the row for north, move the mouse pointer to the border of the selected cells, press and hold the left mouse button, and drag the selected cells to the new position like this. Release the mouse button, and now the order of the cardinal directions is correct. It's north, east, south, and west. However, on the chart, the cardinal directions are still not quite in their places. So let's fix this. Select one of the donut parts and in the settings window change this angle value so that the cardinal directions take more appropriate places. Well, great. One more chart is ready. So let's create another copy of the last worksheet and this time we are going to build a chart that will display the revenue by month. OK, here we start by changing the chart type. Right click on it, select Change Chart Type and this chart will be what is called clustered column chart. OK, the next step is to replace cardinal directions with months. So select the pivot table and here we should remove the region field from the row section and drag the date field here instead. Excel automatically groups the values of the date field by year, quarter and month and since we don't need quarters, let's remove their field from the pivot table. OK, and to display all months, it only remains to expand all the row fields. Also, don't forget to adjust the header text in the pivot table. Great! 
Now let's set up the column labels. Click on one of the labels so that they are all selected. And first of all, let's temporarily change the font color to black so that we can better see what happens to the labels when we change their settings. OK. Now open the additional settings window with help of the plus symbol. And here let's uncheck the category name option to leave only the values themselves displayed in the labels. Good. To create a more attractive look for this chart, let's change the label position setting to inside end, and under the size and properties setting section, let's change the text direction to this one. Since our columns are dark, let's change the font color of the labels back to white. Awesome. The only last setting I would like to tweak is to make the columns thicker. So select them and change the gap width setting to something like, let's say, 70%. And so we've prepared another chart for our dashboard. Now it only remains to prepare the last very specific chart, this map chart. There is already a very detailed video on my channel on how to build such map chart and how it functions. So to save our time, let me quickly create this chart now. And if you want to see and learn how to build this chart, please watch the previously mentioned video tutorial. Perfect, we've just prepared the last chart, so now we can start putting together our dashboard. I create a new empty worksheet, and it will be called Dashboard. In this new sheet, let's first of all remove the grid. OK, now all that is left is to arrange the prepared charts, add slicers, and make the minor corrections if needed. So let's go to the first previously prepared chart, select it, copy it with the Ctrl-C key combination, and return to the dashboard sheet. Paste the copy chart with the keyboard shortcut Ctrl V, move this copy to its approximate future position, and also roughly adjust the size of the chart. Do the same for each prepared chart. Copy the chart, go back to the dashboard, select the cell where you want to position the top left edge of the copy chart, approximately, and paste the chart. And so on. Great, the charts have been successfully copied. So now let's also add slicers, which will allow us to interactively work with the dashboard. To do this, select one of the charts, and on the Pivot Chart Analyze tab, click on Insert Slicer. Let's say we need slicers to filter regions, cities, and years, and click OK. Good. As you can see, the year slicer also displays these shaded elements. Since we don't really need them, right-click on the slicer and select Slicer Settings. In the window that opens, check this option for hiding such elements and click on OK. Good. Now let's place these slicers in their approximate future positions too and adjust their sizes. OK. Now the next step is to connect these slicers to each chart, or more precisely, to each pivot table on the basis of which the charts have been built. Look, if I now interact with the slicers, the changes occur only in one chart, since slicers are currently connected only to this chart. So to fix this, select the first slicer and on the slicer tab, click on the report connections button. In the window that opens, check the box next to each of the listed pivot tables and confirm the changes by clicking the OK button. Repeat the procedure for the two remaining slicers. Good. If we now interact with the slicers, the changes occur in all dashboard charts. Great. It remains only to align and evenly distribute the charts on the dashboard. So let's do it. First of all, let's make these four charts the same size, which will match the size of the categories chart. Here's the easiest way of how we can do this. Select the categories chart and on the format tab, copy its width. Now press and hold the shift button and add these three charts to the selection by simply clicking on them with the left mouse button. Now go to the shape format tab, click this width field and paste the copied width value. Enter, and so easily we standardize the width of these four charts. Now let's also standardize the height of these five charts. First of all, let's only leave the categories chart selected, and now let's manually set the desired height by dragging the top border of this chart. Let's say it should be something like this. OK, now on the Shape Format tab, copy the current height value of this chart and apply it to all these charts. Great, now it's time to align and distribute the charts. First of all, select these four charts and the City Slicer, and on the Shape Format tab, click Align and then click Distribute Horizontally. Now all these gaps are equal, and it means now we have to align the bottoms of these selected elements. Just click on the Align button again and click on Align Bottom. Great, the main structure of the dashboard is defined, so now we can easily adjust the positions of these remaining elements manually. For that, select the Regions chart and go to the Format tab. Here, click on Align and activate this Snap to Shape option. 
Thanks to this option, we can move the charts around and they will automatically align with the edges of other shapes. Therefore, I will manually adjust the position of this chart. Also, let's adjust the size and position of this chart too. And don't forget the slicers. The gaps between the slicers will be automatically set using the vertical distribution. Great, we've just placed all the dashboard elements evenly. If you want to move the entire dashboard with all its sub-elements, just select one of the charts, use the key combination Ctrl A and move the entire dashboard to a new position. Ok, the last step is to protect the slicers from unintentional movement. See what I mean by this. By selecting several elements in a slicer in this way, it is very easy to miss the buttons a little and thus move the slicer instead of selecting elements. To prevent such unintentional movement of the slicers, we must do the following. Select all the slicers and right-click one of them. Then click on Size and Properties, expand the Position and Layout section and check this option here. The slicers are now firmly fixed in place, so let's hide all other sheets and now let's test our dashboard and try to find some insights that become visible through interactive data visualization. Let's start by displaying data for 2022. Ok, now I will switch to 2023 and, well, 2024. If I play with the slicers and see what is happening on the map, I can see that the income in Dresden is constantly growing. On the other hand, the share of the southern region in revenue has moved from the first place in 2022 to the last in 2024. So probably it is a good idea for the manager to go and see what is going on so well in Dresden and why things aren't going so well in the south. Ok, this was just a small example of how the final dashboard can be used and so we've just come to the end of today's video. I hope you liked this video and thanks to it you can now independently build an interactive dashboard for your needs, for example at work. If so, then subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any new tutorials and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.